Our next guest is Andrew Bedortha of the Real Idaho 3%, who will talk to us about liberty. nation on my 17th birthday in Portland, Oregon. Less than two months later, I arrived at Fort Benning, Georgia to start my training as United States Army Infantryman. I saw combat in both Iraq and Afghanistan. I've had brothers make the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Now, it doesn't matter to me about the politics surrounding the wars. The only thing that matters to me is that my country asks for men and women, and I raise my hand to volunteer. When I got out, I had found that idle industries had cast workers into unemployment, human misery, and personal indignity. Those who did work were denied a fair return for their labor by a tax system which penalized success. Regulations that had killed the small rural communities and made it all but impossible for veterans to return to their rural homes and work. In Idaho, 61.6% of the land is owned and managed, managed by the federal government, which imports managers from the East Coast and big cities to tell us what is in our best interest. Mind you, these same people have never had to live and work in that rural community or on the economy, or even know how those rural communities make a living. You have all heard the story of Concord and Lexington. You have heard John Patrick's quote, stand your ground, don't fire unless fired upon. But if they mean to have a war, let it begin here. But think for a moment what that actually meant. Those men standing there, they didn't consider them the British regulars, foreigners, they considered themselves British citizens who were under tyrannical rule of over 3,000 miles away in London. All right? There's less than 700 mile difference between Boise and Washington, D.C. Let that sink in for a moment. Roughly 77 men gathered in Lexington and confronted 400 British regulars. Those brave patriots knew the consequences of their actions. They knew and understood the risks involved. They knew that the British Empire had the best trained and best equipped military in the world. And yet they still chose to stand up and confront them. That is true sacrifice. Now, fast forward to today's time. There's a small ranch community devastated by the seizures and overregulation 
of the land by a government which no better understands their lives than the British Parliament knew of the colonists. In this place, there is only one family left in business, and they protested the government's actions. In response, the government sends 200 paramilitaries armed with military-grade equipment to seize their property. Thankfully, those two similar situations had very different outcomes. But if it wasn't for those brave patriots risking their lives, their outcome would have been deadly for that family. As Ronald Reagan said, we are a nation that has a government, not the other way around. And this makes us special among the nations of Earth. Our government has no power except that granted to it by the people. It is time to check and reverse the growth of government which has grown well beyond the consent of the governed. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. Now I ask you, all you here today, how much are you willing to risk for your freedom? How far is your resolve? What does this mean to you? What does liberty mean to you and your families, your children, your grandchildren, further generations? Take a moment and think about it. Pray about it. Now, I don't want you to respond to this question. Plausible deniability. We don't need to peer pressure anyone, but I just want you to think to yourselves for a moment. Are you willing to risk your livelihood for your liberty? For your family? Are you willing to risk imprisonment? Are you willing to risk your family growing up without a husband or wife, father or mother? Are you willing to risk never having a family? Are you willing to risk your life? Should Christ have refused the cross? Should the Patriots, Concord Lexington, throw down their guns and refuse to fire the shot heard around the world? No. The Patriots at Concord and Lexington understood the risks. And still, stood up together to resist tyranny. They were called in from surrounding communities to help their neighbors. They were asked to come and assist their neighbors in a time of need. And they answered that call. For my own part, I consider it as nothing less than the question of freedom or slavery. There's no middle ground there. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. We all have the choice. Will we pursue?
preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth? Or will we sentence them to take the last steps